Omar is going to go through some issues on night work flagging. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to the conference again. Can you hear me back there? Hello? OK. Uh, so we're going to go through, like, I use this uh, material a lot because I do training uh, everywhere, kind of uh, doing like my OSHA 10-hour courses. And this is actually no replacement for an OSHA 10-hour course, but you can use it. Like, if you put together any, OK. All right. Thank you. So what are we doing is, what I do basically is do the OSHA 10-hour courses, uh, take the mandatory topics, and you can complement this with any of these materials. Because what I use mostly is the um, demos, the very good demos. And a great feature that it has is Spanish. So most of the times, if you have any Spanish speakers in your crew, you can just use this. And you might not need uh, to hire any other Spanish or bilingual staff instructor. Can we check the uh, Spanish feature now, or should we do it later? Oh, OK. So we have this in Spanish. So we're going to learn also Spanish today in 10 minutes. Muy bien. <laughs> so as you can see, you see the bottom in the right hand, it says like Espanol at this point. And you can always just hit that and switch towards the, uh, the features and languages. And it has Spanish. And also, it has voice down here if you want to hear somebody talking in Spanish and you don't want to talk, or English. In my case, I do that as well. <laughs> so, so once we go through, you can just keep like, um, if you have any bilingual stuff, somebody can read for you, or you can just use the voice uh, feature over there, and then it will talk to you. All right, so, ¿qué es, pero, ¿qué es preocupante en la noche? Preocupaciones. And you will sound like that with a different accent. <laughs> Okay, can you switch it to English, please? Thank you. <laughs> so, and then we go through, oh, what I like about the most, and I, I know we, we can't really go in deep into the information, but we can see that what I like, what I use on my training is the demos. I don't know if you have this one. Keep going, please. And in this case, you can change the, the um, pictures of it. Oh, that one doesn't change. All right. You see, the, every time you see the numbers, you can always uh, just hit the number and it show you any demos according to the topic that you're talking about. The number one is show you the alternative, alternating one-way flow. And sometimes another good feature that you might, I, 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 I had to like use it for a while before I found it, that is that you see all the acronyms, like A-F-A-D-S. In case you don't know, you can always find help out there. And then just switch it to it, and it will find the acronyms. If you don't know what an ITCP, then you, you can just point it at it, and then you see an ITCP, and things like that. And you get, it's been like, it was easier to use it like when it was like 12, 13 modules. But it's been growing and growing. Now we have like 22 uh, modules, I think, or 22, 21 modules. But the great thing about this CD is that you can always uh, just print out or use selective uh, modules that you might use for your safety toolbox talks. Let's keep going. Uh, you can go, you can switch the pictures on this module from one. Every time you see numbers over there, there are either, ma either demos or pictures. For example, flaggers as spotters, or flaggers for speed control. Okay, next module. Again, you can see again the numbers again, and we're going to see right here like good equipment illumination. It's going to show you like different types of equipments. What to follow? Well, we have the new MUTC that is coming on right now. And show the TA1, different uh, TA10 um, setups. It's great for like if you're teaching any like flagger courses or any like how to set up a traffic control plan or internal traffic control plan. It gives the workers an idea that what are you doing or what is those uh, signs for, or what are the those are like um, you can zoom in or zoom out to check the um, the distances. C 
safe lager positions, escape road always. Mm -hmm. Then what illumination is needed? And again, you're gonna see always the uh, numbers right next to it and we show you pictures or demos. Because they said like pictures took a thousand words and that's what I use for my courses. Then again, go to number one and number two. And it will just show you, like, provide temporary illumination for all stations, number one. Supplement uh, permanent road lighting. What to avoid? Three, four, there's glare, shadows, backlighting, use of flooring towers. Mm hmm That's it. That's it for this module. All right. So again, this is a great CD. You have it now. Use it. Go through it. Like we don't have time here to go like into deep, deep, deep uh, demonstrations of what it has. But use the demos. And you also have some good links for the. You want to link to any uh, websites like the OSHA site or the Federal Highway Administration site. You can always find here as well. And we see that a little bit, right? And next is probably. <laughs> All right, before I go, we're going to do some testing here. So I'm going to give the mic to, to Rod and Beth and pull out your little handheld devices, and we're going to show you how those can work with it. Does anybody not have a device? All right, we'll get, keep your hands up, and we'll get those to you while Rod begins. I will. I'm going to speak very closely to it. Uh, okay, basically you all have a handheld uh, device. Now the way this uh, works inside this module is there are quizzes inside every module uh, that you can do this with. And you don't have to have these handheld devices to use the uh, tests. You won't be able to collect the data with them though. Now what happens is when we uh, present these questions that uh, come here, you will get them pre and post, and uh, we will get to see how the people in the audience respond. In addition, this writes the information to a database on the file so that if you were using this actually with uh, trainees in a training situation, you would know by the number on their device uh, what their responses were pre and uh, post uh, in regard to the, uh, the database. We're not obviously tracking anything here. We've, we've handed these out randomly, but uh, we will still end up with a database that shows us something of what uh, is there. Uh, the way this works is the questions are presented. We start polling by clicking on the start polling uh, button. And when we do that, you then enter your response that corresponds with the question. And let me read the question and its answers. Who should oversee installation and adjustment of temporary lights? One, is it the contractor? Two, is it a qualified engineer? Three, is it a competent person? Four, is it the electrician? Or five, I don't know. Now, I don't know exactly how many people we have here, so the first time we'll give a little extra, but you can see we're up to 29, 36. Uh, these are the people so far, 44. We've had 44 people respond, 50, 56, uh, 59, and uh, we'll give it a minute to see where we end up, 61, 62, 64. Sounds like an auction, doesn't it? 65, who will give me 66? Who will give me 66? Uh, and there we are, we've got 66. Okay, so let's just say that that's about where we are. When you, uh, when you stop polling at that point, it now allows us to show the responses. And when we look at the responses, this is how the uh, audience uh, voted this one out. Who should oversee the installation and adjustment of temporary lights? Uh, a number of you, about 20%, said it would be the contractor. Fewer than that said it would be the qualified engineer. The majority of you, almost 55%, uh, said the competent person. Uh, some said the electrician. And everybody had an opinion. So we didn't have any I don't knows. And again, I'm not going to be answering this question right now uh, because that's part of what will be presented in the module. Uh, and uh, so I'm moving on to the next uh, question. Question number two. To control glare in the temporary light in temporary lighting, aim the light sources parallel or one perpendicular, two diagonal, three convergent, four oblique, or five I don't know to the approaching or to the traffic. To control glare in temporary lighting, aim the light source parallel or 
one, perpendicular, two, diagonal, three, convergent, four, oblique, or five, I don't know, to the traffic. So we've got uh, 37, 44 responses so far, 53. And you can see uh, how if you were using this, is what's occurring is as this is being written down onto the, and to hear your responses, they also then ultimately are recorded onto, the, um, uh, onto a database, which could be used for analysis. And we're at 62, so we've had four people who uh, uh, no longer want to uh, uh, punch buttons. So I'm going to be stopping here in a moment. 63. Maybe they need a little, ah, uh, there's 63, I'm going to stop right there. So, now we can take a look and here's what we see. And here, of course, you see a much more divergent uh, set of opinions. And by the way, this, of course, can be used to analyze pre or post uh, where you need to uh, adjust your training or the types of things that need to be discussed. And we can see almost a uh, spread across here that is uh, uh, pretty much uh, equal. So let's go to the next question. A key feature of equipment mounted balloon lights is they, one, cost less, two, mount easily, three, are low in maintenance, four, reduce shadows and glare, or five, I don't know. So these are the uh, things we're asking about. A key feature of equipment mounted balloon lights is they, one, cost less, two, mount easily, three, are low maintenance, four, reduce shadows and glare, or five, I don't know. So we're up to 50, uh, 56, 57, 58, 59. We're not going to keep losing. Oh, there, we're 64. Somebody rejoined us again, 65. And we will stop right there. And let's see what it looks like. Well, uh, of course, the uh, majority here uh, believes that they reduce uh, shadow and glare. And that is, of course, a, a primary uh, um, uh, job they will do as we will find out, I'm sure. Here we go to the next question. Uh, in addition to safety, contractors should use proper, uh, proper temporary lighting to increase one, public acceptance, two, DOT approval, three, productivity and quality, four, billable equipment, and five, I don't know. Of course, all good answers, I assume, at some level. Uh, one, public acceptance. Two, DOT approval. Product and quality is three, four, billable equipment. And five, I don't know, 37, 40, 45, 49. And by the way, uh, each of these uh, quizzes only contains uh, four questions on the pre. So you're on the last question right here before uh, Brad begins the module. And uh, we're going to stop right there and let's see what we see. Productivity and quality obviously uh, uh, is the uh, majority of the share here and uh, this would be one of the things. I'm surprised nobody took billable equipment because I know that uh, <laughs> I think everybody's on their best behavior. <laughs> okay, and so at that point uh, when we take the next question, this tells us it's the end of the pretest. And uh, what it's uh, doing right now is, is it's uh, preparing to write this uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the database. And that will take about a second or so here. And uh, then, and there it goes, it's starting to write it right now. And then uh, asking me to save it. And uh, there it gets saved. And uh, we're done. It gives me one last warning and it's now time for you, Brad. Do you wanna move the mouse up? Um, yeah. If I may, I'm going to try to run this myself. I'd prefer the other one. All right, it's a little bit hard when you're standing up here to see around that speaker to the screen. So um, let me turn that just a little bit more. We're going to give this an attempt to, to do it myself and see if I can handle it. All right, so again, these modules, uh, as you can see, are very interactive, um, very basic training. These, of course, wouldn't be intended for someone who's doing the very high-level um, scheduling and setting these things up, but it's great for your work crews who are not necessarily the one in charge, but are who are doing the work, and to understand the principles behind what they're doing, as well as the actual carrying it out. So again, here we talk about why are we doing temporary lighting? What is the basic goal of doing this? And so it's not just to illuminate the workspace, though that's a very important part of it. So we have the proper illumination of the workspace, but also we have to deal and worry about glare to avoid blinding the motorists and the workers. So there are considerations. It's not just a matter of putting up a light. There's reasons that we do that. We also try to work to minimize shadows and increase the safety, both of the motorists and workers, increase productivity, 
and improve the work quality. And so as you see, you can go along here and we talk about proper illumination of the workspace. You can click on and off of those to see how when it's lit up, kind of just demonstrations of how it'd look, of course. And then again, talking about glare, the effects of glare when they're not set up properly. And then talk about how things can be set up to minimize shadows that tend to hide people when they're not set up properly. So again, some of the principles, the goals behind the temporary lighting, more than just lighting the workspace itself. Okay, so there are several recommendations that we follow to try to achieve those goals that we've just spoken about. The recommendations include um, the project lighting plan details um, adequate illumination and control of glare. So there's a plan. There should be, it's not ad hoc. There's plans. There's recommendations of how those should be set up. Also, we know that there must be a competent person, sounds like a test question we just did, that oversees the installation adjustments of lighting. Competent person is a defined term, it's a regulatory term, and it means that there must be someone who has not only the competency, but also the ability to make changes um, if things go wrong, and has the authority of the employer to do that. And then again, um, more than just setting up the lighting, the workers need to know that they need to stay in those areas that are illuminated and to avoid standing in shadows and dark areas, likewise with equipment. When setting up light towers, Realize that there are overhead power lines. Those are not so visible at night. And then here we have charts that will show the distances that you need to be from those lines depending on the voltage um, that is going through them. So again, just some little demonstrations there. Um, again, report problems to supervisors if they see them. Um, and those would be things such as excessive shadows, glare, unlighted work areas, and missing and malfunctioning lights. And again, we can click each one of these things to emphasize what it would look like when there are excessive shadows, glare, unlit work areas, and lights that aren't working properly. So next question comes, what should be illuminated? Do we light up everything or what are the basic things? And again, we talk about the basic goals. Illuminate the workers so they can see the work area. So that becomes a productivity and a quality issue. Illuminate equipment for motorists and workers. So now we're starting to see safety issues that are tied in there. Um, again, mounted lights should not shadow the workspace. So when you're trying to light up for motorists, make sure you're not working backwards. And also other equipment um, should be radiated in, in, in around the area. So again, Buttons here, I won't go over all, but you can go back and review each of those different points to illustrate before and after good and best practices. Okay, so now we ask why we should control glare and why, what are the hazards of that. First, we start out, the, it's a hazard for workers and motorists. It's caused by light scatter within the eye, so it's just a little bit of the science of what glare is. And so it reduces the contrast. So when there's a lot of glare, you're not seeing the contrast between the equipment or the workers and the, the background. Um, What's going on? Oh, sorry. Um, again, it decreases visibility. So here you're putting up lights, but you're actually creating a dis you're dis uh, decreasing visibility if you, have got, if you have got your glare under control. And again, when the cars are looking into that, you're likely to see accidents occur because they can't see where to go, particularly when moving from bright area, brightly lit areas to dark areas or vice versa. So um, how do we control glare? So there, here's our basic guidelines. Mount light sources as high as practical. Get them up out of the air. Direct the light downward towards the pavement. And aim your light sources parallel or perpendicular to traffic. So what you're trying to do is to avoid those diagonals where they're going to hit their eyes. You want to come straight down or in the same direction that traffic is moving. And again, the, co the competent person checks the lights after every setup and makes those adjustments to make sure that there's no glare or no problems. So talking about vehicle work lights. Okay, of course, each vehicle must have its conventional headlights. Should also have warning lights, particularly at night, working in those uh, adjacent to traffic, strobes, rotating, flashing, etc. cetera. Um, and again, recommended practices. The headlights should not be the sole illumination. Um, temporary work lights should be used. Check all lights at the start of each shift and replace anything that's broken, broken or not in use. All right. 
And finally, what other lighting issues are out there? And here we talk about some of the options. Balloon lights, and they talk about why they're good. They have this diffusion material around an internal globe that scatters the light and helps illuminate the shadows. So it's a supplement, they're a good supplement to fixed lighting. Talk about shadow, better mobility for equipment. Re, um, anyway, just a bunch of tips there. And again, this is a repeat of the chart we saw earlier about the, the lights. So there we have it. That was a quick overview on lighting in and around work zones, its purposes, why we do it. Again, most of you who are the engineers probably understand this well, but for those who are going out on the work site and don't understand all the principles and all the various kinds of things we're trying to achieve with lighting, not just lighting the workspace, it can be very useful. So now we're going to go ahead and go to a post quiz and see how much we learned. Okay, so uh, let's uh, just uh, click onto the uh, post quiz and uh, have your uh, units ready. And uh, once again, we ask you this uh, question that uh, appeared before. Uh, who should oversee uh, installation and adjustment of temporary lights? And is it one, the contractor, two, the qualified engineer, three, the competent person, four, the electrician, or five, I don't know. And uh, we've got uh, 55, 56, 57, 61, 62, 63, 64, and, uh, oh, 67, somebody popped up from before. Or somebody got two units in their hand. That's what's going on, I know. All right, let's stop the polling and let's see what we have for the responses. And uh, th that last person who just come in must not have known. They said they didn't know. <laughs> but everybody else, uh, ba well, we still have a couple down here in small percentages, but uh, mo for the most part, the competent person is understood. Okay, the second question is, to control glare in temporary lighting, aim the light source parallel or to traffic. Is it perpendicular? One, two, diagonal, three. Oh, I better start polling. That's right. Okay, uh, is it um, um, parallel or blank, number one, perpendicular, two, diagonal, three, convergent, four, oblique, or five, I don't know. And we're up to uh, 58, 59. 62, 63, 64, okay, 65, will 66, and we won't wait for that uh, last person. So let's stop and let's take a look, and the responses are perpendicular. We can see that in general that the, uh, this is where the bulk of the people came in, and that was, of course, the advice that was given in the um, uh, module. Uh, next question. A key feature of equipment-mounted balloon lights is they, one, cost less, two, mount easily, three, are low maintenance, four, reduce shadows and glares, or five, I don't know. So again, key feature of balloon lights, cost less, mount easily, low maintenance, reduce shadow and glare, and don't know. And we're up to 64, 65, 67, 68, my goodness. Hey, we're, we're attracting a bigger crowd as we go along, aren't we? Okay, uh, 69. <laughs> All right, and here's what we have. Uh, we can see reduced shadow and glare, and that's again in the 80% uh, range. So we'll take up our next question. Uh, four, in addition to safety, contractors should use proper temporary lighting to one, increase public acceptance, two, state, for state DOT approval, three, for productivity and equality, Four for billable equipment, or five, I don't know. And we've got uh, 52, 53, 59, 60, 61, 64, 65. See, I, I'm a sucker. I keep waiting for those others in there. But anyway, there we go. Let's, uh, we will stop right there. And let's see what our responses are. Ah, OK. Some of the honest, some of the, some of the contractors showed up here at the end. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, and of course, the correct uh, answer from the uh, uh, sort, from our information is to increase productivity and quality. And uh, now I said that there, in the pre there is four questions, but in the uh, post we ask an additional question, and that's this question here. And it's uh, here and watching these materials thus far today, have you used something uh, that you will, that have you used something here you learned in your job? Will you be able to use something you learned here in your job? And the questions we're asking are very likely, somewhat likely, somewhat unlikely, or very unlikely. 
And um, of course, this is important uh, for us to understand if uh, some of what has been presented is uh, valuable or not. Uh, 59, 60, uh, 60, 60, 65, okay. So let's see where we are and um, I'm going to stop it right there and let's just see where we are. And uh, there are some people who find it very unlikely or somewhat unlikely, but we can see that the two combined categories here show us that uh, for most of the people here, there will be something uh, that uh, will be uh, used in the future. At this point, it's going to uh, save the uh, uh, post-test. And uh, once this is done, then I'm, I'm going to just show you the, uh, the summary uh, between these two and uh, we will see where we are. And this is, uh, so I'm going to do show the summary, go under here, and that was night work lighting. And uh, here is where we started and where we ended up. Uh, Pre-test, 60%. Post, this uh, groups them in a way as described, uh, almost 100%. Pre, post, pre, post, pre, post. And this is, of course, uh, likely to use on the job, likely or somewhat likely. So you see we have a full review then of uh, exactly uh, uh, what has happened and then we're on to the next person.